Hey everyone, I'm Grace Lunsford. I'm Corbett Lunsford. This is Nanette Lunsford. And this is the Tiny Lab. We run the Building Performance Workshop. And we built the highest performing tiny house on wheels in the world to teach everybody about home performance. First off, it took five months to build this house and we had tons of friends and family helping. We worked nonstop through the weekends and we really wanna say thank you to them first. Yeah, I have made a list, so forgive me, but we're gonna name them my name right now. My mom and dad, Paul and Dusty, gave up five months of weekends and they would work all day long and then come home and help me in the evenings. It was amazing, my dad is all the fine woodworking in here. My mom was the cedar and a lot of the taping in here. They were both super troopers. Big thank you to my mother and father. My mom who came and hung out with us for three weeks while uh, Nanette was being born and she also helped with the cushions and my dad who helped us get our truck, which we could not be pulling this tiny house around without it. Our brothers David and Braden, who came out several times. Eddie Lammers who was the electrical expert on the build and also was the last person to see us off from Tampa. Brad Lemley, who also helped with the air conditioning, and you can see that in a great video. Evan Kuchar, Paul Moss, Mark Dick, and Lee Eng from Tallahassee, uh, Heather and Neil Moyer from Cocoa Beach, Tony Richardson from all the way down in Fort Myers, Rob Donna, John and Carol Linthicum, Matt Lunsford, my cousin, Fred Vandenbroek, uh, Rudy, Sherry, and Guy, our neighbors. Our neighbors who helped with the barn raising. And long distance wise, we had Chris and Jody Lomer Giddens, who are architects up in Atlanta. They were fantastic. Lou Harriman, our humidity consultant, which was brilliant. Brett Singer from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories. And Tom Bassadilly, another architect who helped us with some of the specs. Also, there are 14 product partners that we're going to talk about as we tour the house. Uh, and if we forgot anybody, we sincerely apologize. It was a mad five months. Let's go ahead and start the official tour outside. These are our solar panels. This house is designed to be off-grid, and these are the Panasonic solar panels, which are the highest efficiency panels in the world. They got an award in Japan last year, actually. Uh, now, one of the questions that we always get is, why didn't you put them on the roof where they're supposed to be? And that's uh, because it's the wrong place to put them. Number one, I would have to drill holes in my roof. That's bad because they're going to leak sometime. Number two, I would uh, be worried about them coming off while we're taking this thing down the highway at 55 miles an hour and killing someone. Number three, I can park my house in the shade while the solar panels are in the sun. And number four, if I really want to take advantage of the sun, I have to move these three times a day because the sun moves across the sky. So this is actually the best place for them. We've got 50 foot cables. Um, they're paired two by two and they're on these A-frames and they come with us in the truck. Obviously because we're on tour, this is a little bit of a different situation than a lot of people are going to be dealing with, but the A-frames work really well for us. We have metal siding and cedar siding for the outside of our tiny lab, and our trailer is a drop axle, dual drop axle trailer that is rated for 14,000 pounds, and our house weighs 13,000 pounds. Get a trailer that is made for a tiny house. Don't just uh, get any trailer. This is our gray water collection tank. Since we have a composting toilet, which we're going to show you, all we're collecting in this is soapy water from dishes and showering. Uh, so they can be emptied as long as you're using bio soap anywhere, on the grass, in storm drains, it's fine. That's a 25 gallon tank and it has wheels because 25 gallons of water weighs a ton and you're not going to be able to lift that. This is our intake for the stove exhaust which is up here and here you can see our water fill. Down there is a jack stand, there's one at each corner. On this side we have the entrance to our house and we use just a basic step stool to get up into it. We went for a full glass door to allow a lot of light in and we've also discovered it is really helpful to put signs there because people will just walk into our house. One of the questions we get asked a lot is why the swash, like the little swoop. We did that because it's beautiful. This is one of the more unusual features of the tiny lab. We have a triangular mechanical shed that's at the front of the house. This is aerodynamically designed so that it will catch tree limbs on the top and swish them off. Um, we had to build a custom frame on top of the trailer uh, as part of the trailer build to allow for this. So it's on the same level as the floor. It also means that the tongue stand needs to revolve this way as you can see here, and not on the top around because that would not have worked. So inside the mechanical shed, we have the rest of the solar system. This is the outback system from Solagent. Inverter, charge controller, battery bank, battery monitors, etc. All the wiring, this came pre-wired, which made it a lot easier to do. This is where all of the solar panels are being connected here. Uh, we've got a transformer to turn it from 120 volts into 240 volts because every heat pump in the world nowadays runs at 240 volts So you need to bump it up. This is our fresh air ventilation machine from Brone. 
It's called a heat recovery ventilator. It's taking stale air out of the house and supplying fresh air to the house. Uh, and it's inside this box brushing the two streams of air up against each other to recover the conditioning. So we're not having to recool or reheat all the air that we're bringing inside and not wasting the stuff that's leaving. This is our water heater. It's uh, the EcoTemp. It's the smallest one that you can buy. Really important because you're only going to be using a tiny bit of water if you have one shower and one sink. Also, the water is kept inside the tiny lab, so it's at like 70 degrees, not like water that's coming in from outside. Uh, in a normal house, it's 55 degrees and coming in from the ground. Propane tank lasts us about 10 weeks of cooking and showering, and obviously this powers the propane stove, which we'll show you inside. Bottle jack, it's an important investment. That thing, if you stacked our truck on top of our house and tried to lift them at the same time, that thing could do the job, pretty amazing. This is the outside portion of our Mitsubishi heat pump. It both heats and cools our house and it's super quiet. Hello, this is our house. I am going to show you the kitchen. So the kitchen is one of my favorite things um, because I love to cook and entertain. I'm a Southern girl. We have three eyes and it's really all you need. I'm able to cook full meals for lots of people and it works. Above, I have all of my pots and pans and my swirler and my washboard because occasionally I have emergency loads of laundry. We also have a vent hood, which actually vents to the outside where it's supposed to be. And we have a damper that allows fresh air to come in. And that's what these little beautiful holes actually are for, design and function. The countertop is really nice and large, but we also have additional countertop space that folds out. And this is a cutting board with obviously a little refuse drop because our trash is right underneath. Below our cooktop, we actually have our refrigerator. A lot of people think this is a dishwasher, but it has a locking mechanism so that it won't um, open as we're traveling. And really, it's exactly what you need for a family of two and a quarter. <laughs> uh, we have no science experiments in our refrigerator. This is my beautiful copper, hammered copper apron front sink, and I love it. It's a double sink because this is also my laundry in a pinch, and it's my baby bath, and a double sink really makes it easy for hand washing your dishes, which is what you're going to do in a tiny house. These are our foot pedals that activate the sink. So it's not like a, I have to pump it up and down, it actually is just a solenoid, it op opens up the sink. That's all the water that we're getting from spigots, which are everywhere, at every gas station and rest stop, and in fact there's one literally 30 feet away from our house right now, uh, as we're parked here in New York. This kind of stuff here, drinking water, important, because our 50 gallon tank that's underneath the sink is a bladder, and it's not going to be enough for us to drink with. So we have a two gallon... We have a two gallon... <laughs> we have a two gallon drinking uh, source here. And here we have our Defender low level carbon monoxide monitor, which is gonna protect us from low level poisoning, which your normal carbon monoxide monitors do not do. And a continuous radon monitor. And this is more for show to teach people what is possible in homes. Both of these things are gettable at True Tech Tools, um, who is great with tools because they used to make tools. So they're really tech heads about that stuff. And they can get you all of this stuff to be able to monitor your house. And then the Fubot, which is a very nice gift from Rob Minnick from uh, Baltimore. And with, with this, we're able to monitor carbon dioxide, VOCs, particulates, temperature, and relative humidity. This is a privacy curtain for our giant window, obviously. When we alert people that we are only open for tours one hour a day, we have to actually lock ourselves inside because people will just turn the, the door. They don't knock anymore. Um, so we can take this down with simple hooks right here, like this, when we want to. Stuff is hung on walls and all that stuff is really important. Uh, we have tons and tons of storage. All of this stuff is made out of pure bond, formaldehyde-free plywood. So important in a tiny house because you are breathing the air in here and proportionally you're breathing so much of the air. So anything that's in the air is gonna be definitely inside your body. Our office here with our desktop uh, HP Z840 computer. This is for all of our filmmaking stuff, obviously for this and our television show, Home Diagnosis. Um, people say, oh, why didn't you wire it for sound? Bless you. And it's because this tiny speaker fills up the house as a tiny house. So um, also, sound-wise, the floor is cork. Everybody loves the look of it, but it also is really good at dampening the sound. And you can see the video that we ran the sound test on that.
Here we have our Retrotech manometer that's continuously monitoring the pressure inside the house with reference to outside, making sure it's equalized roughly, making sure that our ventilation system is bringing in fresh air and that it's pressurized. Here we've got our two Dwyer temperature gauges which are monitoring the temperature of that incoming air and the temperature inside the wall on the backside of the insulation. Over here we also have a Dwyer temperature monitor that's inside the cavity there wrapped around a plumbing pipe because the fresh air vent that allows air to come in so that it can be then exhausted outside. If it's freezing cold and it's gonna freeze our pipes, we wanna know before it happens. So let me show you to the upstairs. As you can see, we've got some more cork flooring that we incorporated into the stairs. The stairs have a lot of storage. These are dining booths because we wanted to make a dining booth restaurant feel up here. This table actually folds all the way out. We have another sleeve that goes in the back and we can have that dining booth feel but it also can untwist and lower down. Um, this comes from basically a boat feeling. We'll take the lambskin, put it on top, kick our feet up, and watch a movie, or it can become a little bit of a coffee table feel, and then we will grab our guitars and play a little music up here because that's our hobby and that's what we love to do. One key little thing is we also have a place for our cats. We have two cats in our house and obviously they're going to want to scratch. So we put in a sisal board on the wall. This is the inside portion of the Mitsubishi ductless mini split. The worst part of every heating and cooling system is duct work. So if you can just avoid it and get a ductless mini split, that's all to the better. Also, this is the right answer for most tiny houses. You see a lot of people using fireplaces or pellet stoves, and that's generally way too much heating if you're actually doing a pretty good job of air sealing and insulating a tiny house. Our house only needs 5,000 BTUs per hour of heat and 4,000 BTUs per hour of cooling, and that's built for Atlanta. So really, this thing is too big. It's a half a ton of cooling. That's 6,000 BTUs. It's more than we need. It's also going to be doing dehumidification for you, which is really important, and it runs at 33 sear. A lot of air conditioners that you'd see would be like 13 or 14 sear, so that's really, really highly efficient. When this thing runs, it's only running at like 200 to 300 watts. This is Yebeg, one of our cats. Over here is the ventilation chute. This is a service chase that we built around the entire uh, wall here and it carries the ventilation supply. So this is fresh air coming in from outside beside the front door. Um, I have a damper here that I can turn to control how much air comes out of this upper vent versus the lower vent that leads to our sleeping under loft. Um, and so all of this fresh air is obviously uh, wanting to be tempered with um, the HRV and we have an ERV core that we're switching out when it's humid weather outside. And it turns out that actually we collect a lot of humidity in here from outside. It's generally been moisture outside than it is inside as we've been doing this. And that's kind of an interesting experiment because we got advice that maybe was the, the opposite. The lighting in here is RAB lighting, and the important thing about them isn't just that it's awesome uh, that all of the lights are LEDs, and that when you turn them all on, it's less than 100 watts. It's also that they do a design free for all their clients, not just us because we're fancy. Um, they actually will do a map for you and make sure that the intensity of all the lights for kitchens, you need a certain light intensity for living spaces, another light intensity for bathrooms and bedrooms, etc. So they will do that for you and build renderings. It's pretty amazing. We have this beautiful light above the dining room and it can dim. How beautiful is that? So come join me in the sleeping under loft. Um, as you can see, we put in a pull bar here so that when you're sleepy in the middle of the night and you need a little extra hand, you got it. Um, I also hang a hammock here occasionally for Nanette when she's sleeping. But this is so spacious, it's very, very comfy. Uh, we actually have curtains that can come down and close off the whole area. We have a curtain over there as well. Um, this is also her playroom. We have a little jungle gym. As you can see, our other cat really enjoys <laughs> taking her snooze here. There is a baby bed in the back, and uh, a lot of people see that and go, oh, she's going to roll off it. Well, no, she doesn't roll off it because at night, I pull it up to me so that I can get her and she'll just roll onto me, which she does. Um, behind this piece of fabric, come here, is our closet space. A lot of people wonder, where do you put your clothes? Well, we have a hanging area. I even have an ironing board. Um, this also ends up being a little storage for backpacks and our little folding chair and the hammock. Plus, we have two sets of shelves for more clothing. We have a little hamper at the bottom. It's really all you need. 
And um, because we are chasing the sun on our tour, we only have one season of clothing. Of course, there's the bathroom in here, and I think this might be the first shoji door that's a hardware-free Japanese-style door that is made out of plywood. So it's pure bond from aldehyde free plywood, got the rice paper in it, it uh, glows very nicely. It also has vents built into it. That's really, really important because we're trying to exhaust all the air from over the shower so that all the moisture and the contaminants from these two spaces go outside, and then the fresh air gets pumped back to the back of the tiny lab. So when you come in, we have a full-size shower. It's a 32 by 32 square shower. That's a one piece that we found at a home improvement superstore. I was very happy to find that because I did not want to build my own. We have the cat food in the bottom of the shower. That is very helpful because animals eat like animals. And so they make a mess all over the place. And when we get in and take a shower, it goes away. Over here, we have our composting toilet. It's an airhead. Um, it has this fan that's pulling air outside all the time, and for that reason, it actually smells less than normal toilets do. Grace tends to say that she likes using the bathroom here better than in other bathrooms, because this thing is just better. Uh, we have a diaper genie, because we've got a baby, we have tons of dirty diapers in here, we have the composting toilet, we have a litter box in this cabinet right here. You can't smell any of this stuff in here because we designed the ventilation system to be tuned so that it extracted. This is the end of the line for the ventilation. So you can't smell any of this stuff in here, and that's so helpful. A lot of people think that a house would stink if it was 200 square feet and had two cats in it. Uh, we've got shelving. We have a built-in changing table for Nanette. A lot of people think this is a cat bed. I don't think those are cat owners. And obviously the lighting is dimmable in here as well if you want to take a romantic shower or a romantic bathroom time. As you might have noticed, there are these plaques all over the house explaining the invisible features of the house because of course this house is built to teach home performance. One of the most important things you can't see here is the air tightness layer, which is provided by 475 High Performance Building Supply. We have two shrouds, a bunch of tape. If this house was air sealed with caulk and spray foam, it would have cracked in the first thousand miles and we've clocked 3,000 miles at this point. So this house is built to withstand an earthquake and a hurricane at the same time on a weekly basis because we're on tour and it's built like a tank. The air tightness layer is why it's so quiet in here in the middle of New York City, why it's so humidity controlled and comfortable, etc. So that really is a big deal and you want to be paying special attention to how much you're air sailing and of course testing is the way that you find out how well you did. So thanks for joining us and please follow along as we are on our previous possible tour. We have 12 more cities coming up and we hope to be in your neighborhood soon.